Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be doing a tier list for all 45 civilizations in Age of Empires 2 from the best civilizations to the worst. All of them will be ranked today. This will be the 2024 edition. I did one of these seven months ago for 2023. We've since received two new civilizations. There's been tons of balance changes, tons of new patches. So it's definitely a good time to revisit this. And as always for this specific tier list, we're going to be doing overall for 1v1. So all maps, but the setting will be 1v1. I'm not going to consider team games at all. And I will be giving points for civilizations that do better in multiple maps. And I'll definitely mention when a civilization is only good in one map. However, civs that are like the best in one map will still be scored pretty high. So it's like basically how strong civilizations are when you take them all uh, in a holistic view for 1v1. So starting off, we're going to go through them alphabetical. And I've got my tier list here. So S tier is like the overpowered civilizations, the civilizations that feel unfair to play against. Uh, in A tier, we've got the strong civs, the ones that are consistently being picked, that are very strong. Uh, not always the ones that get banned in tournaments, but the ones that are pretty good. Then we've got B, which is solid. You can't go wrong with these civilizations. If you like them, pick them. If you don't like them, it's fine. You're not missing out. Subpar, these civilizations will be like pretty bad, but still very playable. Like it's not like you can't win with them. They just have some, you know, clear weaknesses. Um, or they're just not that special. And then in the D tier, the bad tier, these are the civilizations that clearly need a buff or are just not that good and you should avoid them unless you really like them. Um, this, this tier list will be pretty good for all ELOs, I imagine. And I will mention if a civilization is like particularly good in high ELO or low ELO. With all that said, let's go ahead and hop right in, starting with the Armenians. Uh, now, it's kind of weird to place the Armenians because it's a civilization that is right off the bat kind of hard to play. And it's also a newer civilization. Uh, it has really good strengths in terms of its economy, really good in terms of water play as well. Pretty solid on a lot of hybrid maps too, and also has decent options on closed maps because of a strong economy. However, the glaring weaknesses is the fact that it lacks Bombard Cannon and it lacks heavy cavalry or full armors on their cavalry in Imp. So they have a really tough time sniping Bombard Cannon and playing against Bombard Cannon. And since they don't have it as well, it's really difficult uh, to maneuver. You only have like monks with 12 range and redemption maybe. Uh, other than that, you have like champions with 100 HP and, and warrior priests to dive in there and try to deal with the cannons. Um, and, and cannons are a big part of late game. So for me, Armenians are going to be overall in the B tier. Uh, solid, really good on water maps, high priority there. Pretty good on hybrid maps, pretty okay-ish. Maybe a little bit weak on like Arabia and open land maps, uh, but definitely still worth considering. Uh, next up, we've got the Aztecs. Uh, the Aztecs for me have always been a very solid civilization uh, just in general. Um, they're one that it's a little bit difficult to play, uh, especially for the newer players, Mesosivs, especially the Aztecs, because we don't have like fully upgraded Arbalest. Uh, we don't have Halbadir. It can be kind of tricky to understand like how to play with the civilization. Uh, but I think one thing that can really help is the new Meso build that I have for my Patreon members and my Twitch subscribers, where I basically just show like it's the pro way to play Meso, where you play with a little bit of like eagle pressure early plus range at the same time, one barracks, one range. So either Archer Skirm plus eagle. And that way, in my opinion, if you can get good at that, then Mezzo will be a lot easier for you. Uh, and, and for the Aztecs, you know, in general, I would probably put it in bottom of A tier or top of B tier. Uh, there's not a single map where I feel like Aztecs are just terrible on. They seem to always be a threat. And they're very far from being overpowered. At the moment, there's not a single map where Aztecs are like the undisputed best civ. But I feel like it's really hard to justify Aztecs being any lower. It's going to be bottom of A. I'm going to fill it up for sure. But Aztecs for me are a very solid civ overall. Uh, next up, we got the Bengalis. I need to start speeding it up here, by the way, because I'm spending too long in just a couple of civs. Uh, next up with the Bengalis. Um, the more I play with the civilization, the more I like it, actually. Uh, it feels like a very solid civ. The worst part about this uh, civilization is the fact that their unique unit, the Ratha, is not a bad unit at all. It's a good unit, but it's extremely clunky. It's super hard to use. It's a very like big unit. It's hard to know if it's melee or range. If you switch, you know, you have to switch all of them for melee to range. And then you have to like select a few if you want to split half and half. It's just a very clunky unit to use. If you've used it, you probably know what I'm talking about. Um, definitely not a bad unit. But other than that, Bengali as a Civ is actually solid. Um, hard to say where to place it. I think I'm going to put it bottom of B because it performs really well on closed maps, really decently on hybrid maps and water maps. And it's like a little subpar on land maps, but still playable. Definitely a Civ that's awkward though. Awkward Civ, but good in the right hands. 
Uh, next up, we got the Berbers. I'm not going to think too much for the Berbers. In my opinion, they're very straightforward. They're probably going to be somewhere in the bottom of B tier, even behind Bengalis, just because Berbers are really never the best sieve on any particular map. Like, I can't remember the last time where I was like, yes, this is a Berber map for sure. And the reason for that is that Berbers spend the first 15 minutes as basically a generic civilization. They have zero bonuses besides villagers moving fast, from Dark Age to Castle Age. Castle Age onwards, they have a bunch of bonuses though. Cheaper stable units, which applies to camels, knights, light cav. They also get the genitor from the range. They also get camel archer, which is a very solid option. And it feels like the game really opens up for the Berbers Castle Age onwards. So with all that in mind, it's a very solid sieve. It has clear strengths and clear weaknesses. Never really feels like the best, but never really feels like a bad option either. Definitely a bottom of B tier kind of sieve. Next up, we got the Bohemians. I started out hating the civilization, but thinking it's good. Then I started out in, in the middle. I thought it was really good, and I still didn't like it. Um, and then now I feel like it's actually really good, and I like it. Um, I've come around on this on a personal level. It's actually really strong at doing weird stuff, like going for Hen Cannon here in Castle Age, going for like the How Bombard Cannon with Hoofneeds upgrade in Imp with maybe like food monks to support it in the late game. It doesn't come up too much, but it's definitely an option. Um, and, and it also has decent early game with like monk rushes. His sight wagons are now pretty good since they've gotten, you know, buffed and obviously a bit nerfed, but still a solid unit. For me, the behemoths feel really good, but it's hard to know where to place them. I also think they're decent on hybrid maps because usually on hybrid maps, you can get like a lot of gold income since, you know, or golden food, uh, sorry, golden wood since you're going to be fishing. You don't need to put too many on farms and all that. So you can have more bills gathering gold, which is a good thing for the behemoths to get gold and stone upgrades for free. Uh, it's hard to know exactly where to place them, but honestly, they feel like a really solid sieve every time I play them. Uh, I think I'm going to place them... I think I'm going to place them in the top of B tier. Um, they're really good on closed maps. They're, I think, passable and pretty good on Arabian maps. You just have to play them in an anti-meta style. Play different. Don't play like Archer into Crossbow or like Scouts into Knights with them. You can play Archer Defense into Expo, into Hand Cannon and Castle Age, into Chemistry Expo, something different, into Monks, into his side Wagons, something a little bit different, and then build up into that Powerhouse late game uh, that they're really strong in. Uh, next up, we got the Britons. As much as I want to say Britons are like a 6 sieve, they feel really underwhelming nowadays. Like, I don't know what happened with Britons, but they just don't feel good anymore. Obviously, they took a small nerf. Archers have been gutted like multiple patches in a row now. I still don't think Britons are in a bad spot right now. Archer pathing is getting a bit better. Hard to say where to put them. I think I'm going to put them top of subpar. Not because it's a bad sieve. I'm actually a huge fan of Britons. I just feel like it just doesn't do enough right now. Uh, besides your arch archer line play, you don't really have a whole lot of options. Um, they don't even have Gambus and Champions anymore. They got that like the first you know patch, and now it's gone. Uh, at least as far as I know, I could be wrong about that, but I think they lost it. And I don't know. I, I just don't really think the Britons are all that good. It's like feels like a one trick pony sieve that's not even that good under one trick until like Imp. Because the extra one range in Castle isn't that great since obviously like Elite Skirm can still close the distance. Maybe it's a modern thing. Just the more I play with Britons, the more I see them, the less scary or the less good they feel. Next up, we got Bulgarians. Now, for those who are uh, around on my Twitch stream, you guys know the Bulgarians meme. Uh, it's hilarious. For those who don't know, go to my Twitch chat, type exclamation mark Bulgarians. That is a real comment that I got, and it's absolutely hilarious. Uh, if my editor could pop it up on the screen, that could be great as well for you guys to enjoy. Uh, but anyways, Bulgarians, um, unfortunately, they're a pretty bad sieve right now. Uh, I'm going to put them in the D tier. There's only a few sieves that will go in the D tier, and I think Bulgarians are one of them. The funny thing is, maybe I need to rename the, B the D tier, because I don't think it's a bad sieve. Or, like, it's not a terrible sieve. Like, bad just means it's, like, bad, but not terrible, okay? Uh, I have to emphasize that, because I still think Bulgarians are playable. They still feel like they could win. They have a lot of nice aggression that they can go for. It's just like, if you think about the Bulgarians, what map do they really shine in? They're not great in the 1v1 Arabia because most of just open straight archers or just like can match their early minute arm timing. And then after that, Bulgarians have to get some kills or something going or else they fall behind since they have no eco bonus. It's an infantry based sieve. Infantry is not always viable. Uh, so rape is not great. On closed maps, they're horrendous since they lack BBC. Uh, they lack good monks. So yeah, you have a decent boom. You have good cavalry and siege, but like an infantry. But other than that, not really too crazy. You have no hand cannon here as well. There's so many holes in the texture for the sieve. And, it is, and on water maps, it's terrible. On hybrid maps, it's okay if you go into arms. It's like a predictable sieve. It has holes in the texture. No real eco bonus to carry it. 
You have to be a very skilled player with Bulgarians to make them work. One little caveat, though, in lower elos, Bulgarians is actually solid because um, the crep post and like the just meta arm play can really be solid against players who are not ready for that kind of aggression. So hyper aggression, Bulgarians can be good. Higher elo and pro pro level, definitely a D tier sub. Uh, next up, we got the uh, the Burgundians. Ooh, the Burgundians. Where did this sieve go? Um, I think it's going to go bottom of A or top of B. Uh, I'm going to play it safe. Now, let's go Let's go middle of A, actually. Uh, just because it is basically the number one arena sieve, and it's really good on closed maps. It's also really good on any land map. Yeah, but any land map, Burg Burgundians are good. Good on closed maps, good on like hideouts. Uh, good on arena, obviously. Like passable for Black Forest in a lot of cases. Uh, pretty good on 1v1 Arabia, like no, nothing wrong with, uh, you know, just a standard uh, land map can be played on land madness. Can be played on pretty much any land map uh, I can think of. They're going to be a solid pick. Uh, just getting the early eco upgrades, the Custodia being solid, the, ca the Cavalier and Castleage, the Relics, like any Relic map, Burgundians are top tier as well. Uh, and I can even see the Civ being kind of played on water maps as well. There's nothing really bad about it on like hybrid maps, not pure water. Their late game water texture is not great. But hybrid maps, it's a good sieve. Not nothing bad about it. Uh, next up, we got the Burmese. Um, uh, Burmese is going to go into the sub part here. I refuse to put it in bad. It's absolutely not a bad sieve. Um, I think it's a very solid one, actually. I personally like it. So I rate it a little higher. But I think sub par is you know a very safe place to put Burmese. They they are a, a good civilization in terms of economy for the mo majority of the game. They have one glaring weakness, which is missing the arm the archer armor. Uh, for like the skirms especially uh, no arbalest so it could be a little bit like tricky in early imp but if you can just get into like your you know cavalier units or cavalier hussar maybe elephants as well uh, you have some decent late game options and one thing i want to note i tried the burmese harambe recently a little bit more it's a sick unit it's super underrated it got changed a bunch and we kind of disregarded it especially in pro level but I'm telling you, Burmese Aramba is really good. It's not an early castle unit like Conquistador. It's not bad in early castle, but in my opinion, it's a late castle, late imp unit because you get all the upgrades, you mass it up, and it basically just one-shots everything. And it can even one-shot groups of units because all the Aramba shoot at once, and it creates kind of like a splash damage mangonel type effect. Really, really cool units. Unfortunately, Burmese, they have some weaknesses, like I said, that sometimes they feel like a little awkward in the matchup. You know, no camels, no hand cannoneer. Um, you know, you are missing, you know, armor on skirms. So they have some holes. The economy bonus is not spectacular as well. But for me, they're really solid. I, I really like Burmese. Next up, we got the Byzantine. Uh, Byzantine is, in my opinion, the definition of a solid sieve. I'm going to put it like top of B tier. Great on all hybrid maps. We can make use of the fire galley bonus. Pretty good on all kinds of land maps as well. If you make you know make use of the counter units, uh, uh, sorry, did I say on hyper maps you make use of the fire galleys? Land maps make use of the counter units. I don't know if I misspoke there, but that's how it should be. Um, the, and obviously have a really good vision with the free town watch, free town patrol. I really love that. It's my favorite bonus from Byzantine. Late game is solid. You have a counter to everything. Cataphract takes care of all infantry. You got hand cannon here if you need bomber cannon if you need. Uh, really underrated point point about Byzantine. The building HP is actually sick. Like, let me know in the comments below if you like that. I think the building HP is really sick. Super underrated. You don't really think about how strong it is until you're like in that situation where the castle is never dying. There's not really anything bad about Byzantine. For me personally, the only thing I don't really like about them and why I don't like the Sif too much is that I feel like it's hard to take initiative with them. Uh, you could take initiative with Spear Skirm or maybe a forward on like Arabia. But, or like maybe a Monk Rush. But other than that, you don't really have Bloodlines and you don't really have the best crossbow play because no eco bonus. So I feel like you're a bit reactive, playing with counter units a bit more, kind of taking your time a little bit more, which I guess it's not a bad thing, but it's just a personal thing. Sometimes I wish I can take the initiative a bit more with Byzantine. Uh, next up, we got the Celts. Uh, Celts did actually receive some buffs since the last time I covered them. They were in the D tier. I'm going to put them in the bottom of C tier now. I, I don't think the Civ is terrible now. Uh, definitely got some small buffs. They got ring archer armor, and they also got plus five HP on the wood raiders, um, and I believe plus one attack on imperial age wood raiders. I could be wrong on that, but they really received some buffs, and I do feel like at this point, Celts are actually not bad. They're very much playable. Um, they're decent on hybrid maps because the wood bonus lets you go crazy on water. So water and hybrid maps, not really water maps, but hybrid maps, Celts are solid. On water maps, they lack like late game, uh, you know, water tech, but. Hybrid maps, 
you can go water till castle there's no problem then you can mix in a siege push you can go for like men arm rush if you want to militia rush if you want to uh even just like spear skirm on arabia or like spear scouts in arabia can be good as well i i think you need to make use of the spear bonus or the infantry bonus as much as you can fast moving infantry either men arm militia or spear um but if you can it gets you through the early game and you know castage onward scouts are solid they get a little awkward in their imp transition though because you can't play like crossbow skirm and imp by itself you don't have bomber cannon which is like an early imp thing so in, from castage to imp it's really awkward for Celts. you have to switch to either wodes or like halb heavy siege or even paladin but all those transitions require a lot of time i think that's the the biggest weakness with the civ actually next up we got chinese uh, with the new drop of hockey, Chinese are closer towards the top of the list. I think I'm going to put them in the top of A tier, though, because they're not great on closed maps. And they're not great on um, uh, uh, on hybrid maps. They're, they're just okay on, on closed maps and hybrid maps. They're also not great on water maps. So they're only really playable on open land maps. Arabia, Land Madness, uh, Haboob, you know, th things like that, Crater. Uh, maps that you can just, you know, play a standard game get ahead two fills, and then you're good. That's where Chinese are really strong. The new um, drop-off resources hockey also makes Chinese start like insanely good. So I think they got a pretty big indirect buff on that one. Uh, I like that hockey a lot. I think it helps Chinese uh, quite, a, quite a bit there. Um, but yeah, top of eight tier. Top, it's basically number one civ on Arabia. I, I did put it in my top, you know, top five at number one, my top five meta civs on Arabia. It's basically the number one on Arabia, but... Not doing a whole lot on some of the other categories. Still worth putting it at, at strong. And I have to say as well, uh, Chinese used to be really bad at low elos. Now the start is easier. If you're a low or mid elo player or a beginner or whatnot, don't be too scared of Chinese, okay? I have tools out there that help you with the start. I have a YouTube video on it. If you get the start down, they're still a good sieve. And they're actually easier to play after the first five minutes, in my opinion. Next up, we got the Cumans. Uh, I think I'm going to put the Civ, uh, maybe this is personal bias, but I think it's actually really good just because of the 2TC boom. I wish I had like another category with this, like a, like a potential, I'm sorry, there's a cat fly in the back. I don't know if you guys can hear that. Um, but yeah, I think I'm going to put them bottom of eighth here. Um, just because this Civ has the potential to be like the best Civ in the game. If you can get away with a 2TC boom or 2TC boom plus tower rush, 2TC boom plus attack. Like if you get away with it, it's like basically the best save in the game because you're up 20 bills and it's really hard to lose from that situation. They have some weaknesses and it's usually just a mind game with the cumans. But for me personally, like every tournament, a lot of maps revolve around cumans. If cumans are in, they're the best save or you need a cuman counter. You can't play like the second best save and match cumans because cumans will destroy you. So you need like, the 10th best sieve, which just happens to counter cumans. For example, on outcrop, okay? I don't know if you guys know this map, but on outcrop, you have cumans, 2TC boom, wall up. That's like the best strat, okay? Uh, the next best strat might be something like Hindustani. Fast castle or just scouts into fast castle, and you're good. If you go Hindustani against cumans, sometimes cumans gets way too far ahead, and you can't really win. So instead, you go like Saracens, which is not really great on outcrop in general, just to go for like, you know, an all-in, a fast castle with the market, mar you know, camel plus monk plus siege, and hope to push and kill humans. Things like that, that little mind game, I, I think humans makes, or I, th I think about humans makes them a very strong civ and definitely one that you have to watch out for. Even in Arabia, if you can 2TC boom in Arabia safely, all right, then you're going to be, like, doing really well. It's hard to judge it, but I think it could be either the best civ in the game or the worst civ. So I'll put it in bottom of eighth tier. Uh, I mean, it's never going to be the worst if it's always going to be like sub far, but I'll put it in bottom of eight here. I think I'm happy with that. Next up, we got the Dravidians. Oh, God, the meme potential is crazy here, but I think I'm going to put Dravidians actually in the top of sub par or the bottom of solid. Um, it's closer. Actually, it's going to be middle of solid, probably even above Bengalis in a lot of cases. Now, I'll stick them below Bengalis. Uh, reason for this, I didn't come around on the Civ or anything. And the memes between me and Viper, it's like the civilization is really bad in a lot of ways. It has clear holes. The Ruby Swordsman is a useless unit. Let's be real here. It needs Pierce Armor to do anything. Uh, Dravidians are, uh, you know, clearly lacking some, something in their cavalry department. It's very weak there. Uh, but other than that, you have infantry and archers and siege that are all pretty decent. You have a reasonably good uh, eco bonus with the extra 200 wood uh, per age. So they can compete on most land maps. Um, they have elephant archers, which are also really good in late game. Like elephant archers, I forgot to mention for Bengalis. Elephant Archers is like the boss unit in late game for these two civs. Um, they're very good. 
Uh, but yeah, uh, Dravidians clearly have some weaknesses on land maps and whatnot, but I think they really shine on hybrid maps and pure water maps. I think that makes them like really top tier, um, you know, in, in tournaments where there's a lot of water maps. And I, I think you could even make an argument for Dravidians being higher, actually. Yeah, because they are like close to being number one in, in water maps. I might even put them top of B, uh, of B tier. Um, they're not quite as strong sieve because they have some clear weaknesses. Even on the hybrid maps, they have some clear weaknesses. But they are like super solid and definitely something you have to consider every time there's a hybrid or water map in there. Uh, okay, next up we've got the Ethiopians. Ethiopians is a sieve that just never does anything in particular, but they feel fun to play and they feel solid. Uh, it doesn't do anything in particular. Like there's no one map where you're like, oh, I need Ethiopians here. It's like, oh, I like Ethiopians, so I'm going to pick them if they're open. And if they're not open, uh, just leave them. I don't really mind. That's kind of how I think about Ethiopians. If you love archers, you're going to love the sieve. If you love aggression, you're going to love the sieve. It also has a pretty decent late game. I think I'm going to put it in the top of subpar. It feels a little like Britain's, where it's a little bit one-dimensional what it does. It does nothing in particular, but it's pretty good at like a variety of maps. And I think it just never feels bad, if that makes sense. It never feels bad, but it never feels great. Um, so I think top of subpar makes a lot of sense. And I personally happen to be a pretty big fan of Ethiopians myself. Uh, if it was a pure Arabia tier list, maybe you're looking at B or bottom A. But hey, you know, if you consider all the maps, definitely Ethiopians around C feels fine. Uh, next up, we got the Franks. Uh, Franks are a civilization that does incredibly well when it can just do its thing, which is just like cavalry, it, you know, Cav Skirm, Boom to Paladin. It has a few good plays. It has Axeman, Onager, Hand Cannoneer, Bomber Cannon. It has a few decent compositions as well. It has the Castle Spam that kind of carries it in lower mid elo. Uh, it got nerfed a little the castle spam, but hey, it's not so bad uh, still. I don't know. I, I think Franks are just a good sieve in general, but not a great sieve. I'll probably stick them. And they're actually pretty good on hybrid maps as well. They're okay in hybrid maps because the free farm upgrades don't matter that much in hybrid maps. And you're also not milling your um, your berries. So on hybrid maps, there's like an idea that Franks are like pretty bad because you're not really using your bonuses. But I still feel like they feel fine. Because you get to fight for the water and go for like the scouts at the same time, for example. And then later on, when you do go into farming or you do go into berries, the berry bonus will kick in. The free horse collar will get your head in the mid game. And it could kind of carry you into like a nice two stable knights where you don't need to get bloodlines and your knights are super strong off the get go. So I, th I think they're decent on hybrid maps. And there's some maps uh, that Franks, uh, you know, are pretty strong at, uh, even if they have some water element to it. Uh, overall, though, I'd probably put them somewhere in the B tier. I don't know if it's like top of B tier, uh, probably somewhere behind like Byzantines. Um, these two civilizations tend to get a bit more priority. They tend to do a little bit more than the Franks. But like like I said, if, if you're talking about just Arabia or land maps, Franks can go much higher. Uh, definitely not S tier under any circumstances, by the way. But, you know, at most I can see the mid of A, of a tier. Next up, we got Georgians, and this is going to be our first S tier civilization. I put them in my top five meta civs for uh, Arabia uh, a few weeks ago, and they were at number five. And that's true for Arabia. They're like around number five, maybe number three if you really push their luck. Where they are really good, in my opinion, is the hybrid maps. A free mule cart is ridiculous. You save so much wood in the early game, you now have zero penalty. So just going for a crazy build, like the Lithuanians one, where you go like lumber camp first. You have the free mule cards, do a little bit of food, then send to wood right away, or go to the dock right away even. And then a couple on wood, and you can just get, get your fishing ships out earlier. And you're just going to turbo your economy with, with the Jordans, because you, you basically just start with a free lumber camp. It's, it's ridiculously good. Uh, and then on top of that, you get the crazy healing on your scouts, which scales incredibly well into you know healing on knights, healing on Manaspa. All cav units can heal. The late game is really good. The only thing they're missing is bomber cannon. Literally the only thing. Everything else they have. Hand cannoneer is there. Skirm, missing the last armor could hurt, but nothing crazy. They have the church, which is so nice as well. Uh, the, the economy is crazy with Georgians. There's not, nothing bad to say about the Civ. It's clearly S tier for me. Their start's going to be insane. Um, and I, I, if I were you guys, it's a harder Civ to play. I would abuse this while it's still ripe. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest. This Civ is absolutely busted. Abuse it while it's still ripe. Uh, they're good on every setting in the game, e even team games. I know we're not talking about team games, but e even team game pocket, they're really good. Even Nomad, they're really good. <laughs> like They're good on every map, literally. Uh, next, you have Gots. Uh, Gots are by no means a bad civilization. I think they're a little bit tricky to play. 
uh, at lower levels, the infantry spam could be, you know, over overwhelming. And I think it's a pretty good set at lower levels, especially for, you know, extreme beginners. Um, Gots feels like a very simple and straightforward sift to play. At higher levels, and, you know, in talking about pro play, I think you have to make use of their, you know, laming and dark age with the free loom or instant loom. Sorry, not free loom. With the instant loom, send the vill forward, cause some corruption, uh, and then kind of build up. Hunts lasting longer is a sick bonus. They can go skirms, uh, spear... They can go spear scouts. They can go meta arm. They can even go pure meta arm in some cases into long swords. Like it's one of the civs that can really play with infantry. Uh, it has a lot of cool plays. I think I'm gonna put it somewhere in the C tier. Um, realistically, it might be better than Burmese. I'm not really sure about that. It's kind of tricky. Uh, I do think that Gothsi is a bit more tournament play than Burmese if I consider tournaments. But like just in general, I, I think Goths are slightly more deadly than Burmese. I would prefer Burmese over them any day of the week, but you know, you got to give it to the Goths. Uh, their early game is pretty damn solid as well. Uh, next up, we've got the Gurjaras. Gurjaras are super top tier, in my opinion. And, well, not like OP, but they're like good on like a variety of maps. Uh, they are just like sick. And the Shivamsha Riders in late game are insane, by the way. But by far the best thing about Gurjaras is their unique tech and castle, making all their units cheaper in the food department. That tech is crazy good. And it's expensive. Like, I don't think it needs to be nerfed or anything. It's just like, it's crazy good. You want to get that and then either go all in castle with Shrem Shrider or just go imp, then pick it up and then go like, you know, imp units, hen cannon near bomber cannon, shakram thrower, Shrem Shrider, Hussar, camel. You have so many options uh, that blend really well together, by the way. Uh, one caveat, though, with the Gurjaras, one little point I want to kind of talk about. They're a little awkward in the start. And I think that could be a turnoff for a lot of beginner players as well. Um, or just a lot of players that, you know, might not like a fancy start. For me personally, I actually don't like their start either. It's, it's, it's a good start. I just don't like doing it. Um, I also don't like starting with a camel much. Um, even though, like I said, it is still objectively pretty good. Overall, I'm going to put the Gujaras in kind of bottom of A tier. Above the Cumans, I think they're better than Cumans in a lot of cases. Definitely a meta contender. And definitely a, a sieve to keep an eye on in tournaments. And it's a sieve that gets slept on a lot, by the way. Like, this is, you're not going to see a lot of people necessarily agreeing with me on this, but like, I'm pretty sure I tested the Gajaras extensively for Hidden Cup. I'm pretty sure the sieve is like super solid. Next up, we got the Hindustani. This sieve is going to be either bottom of S tier or top of A tier. I've really come around on the sieve, man. I, I used to think it was good. Now I think it's like excellent. I think I'm going to put it right behind the Chinese in A tier. It doesn't feel like it's the best sieve on any one map, uh, but it feels like it's a great sieve on so many different maps. It, there's not a single map where it's bad on. Like, even water, like, maybe water maps and that's it. Like, Nomad, it's passable. Land maps, it's passable. Closed land maps, passable. Open, closed, whatever. Uh, hybrid maps, it's passable. It's good, actually, on, on all those maps, except water. I, I would honestly think it's like... Um, yeah, I think it's like either top of A or bottom of S. Oh, I'll stick in top of A for now. Next up, we got the Huns. I put them in the D tier last time. I'm not sure if I want to do the Huns dirty again this time, though. I think I've come around a little bit on the sieve. I think it, I, I see the strength of it in one particular case. If you play fully open on an aggressive map, I think they're okay. But the sieve feels really hard to make work, and it has clear weaknesses. Um... I think I'm going to put it bottom of C this time around. Kind of bump it up. This is just me coming around a little bit. They have a really nice feudal age. And there's a new meta. I'm like, it's an old meta that I'm kind of bringing back a little bit on the ladder right now. You basically open a stable. And then you make a few scouts to get like the initial like push forward. And then you switch to archers with one range right out, like as soon as you can. And you're basically playing to get to like scouts and archers at the same time. It's a really hard style to play. But I think Huns can be really good at that. And that's how we used to play Hun Wars back in the day. So like I said, it's an, it's an old style, like eight years ago, 10 years ago. And I think that style is actually still decent right now. So I'll put Huns in bottom of C tier. Um, nothing to brag about, but definitely can play really aggressive and win games off that style. But it suffers from the same problems as Bulgarians. It feels like you have to do something with their military or else they fall behind. And you're also playing really open usually because you don't have houses to close your base. So they could be a little awkward. Good on hybrid maps though. It is worth noting. They're good on hybrid maps. You could make an argument for Huns being above Burmese. But honestly, I think I'd still prefer Burmese in a lot of situations. Uh, hard, hard to say though. Uh, next up, we got the Incas. 
Um, God, this might not just be another sip in A tier, honestly. I'm going to put them in A tier right above the Aztecs. Same reasoning as the Aztecs. They never feel bad. Uh, they're a little bit easier to play than Aztecs because their start is a little bit smoother. Uh, but yeah, in general, I feel like if you're looking for an Eagle Civ, Incas are solid. Uh, they got nerfed a little bit. They used to be like S tier. Now they're, now they're kind of confidently placed in middle of A tier, I would say. Uh, yeah, this is a good place to have Incas, I, I think. This is a good place to have Incas. Uh, they basically dominate land maps. And I would say, especially land maps, where you can do like a little bit of aggression into full walls. And then like Eagle Spam, that's like the best version for them. But they can be, play pretty well in like Arena and all kinds of uh, closed land maps as well. Hideout, whatever. They play decent into those. Uh, they have a counter to everything, really. They're, their arsenal is very vast. Uh, next up, we got the Italians. Uh, Italians are not the best water sieve anymore. Like, necessarily, I think Armenians is, like, the best water sieve overall. Dravidians are also, like, in there. Vikings are always, you know, in there. So Italians is not, like, undisputed best water sieve anymore, like they were maybe two years ago. Uh, but I still think it's, like, top five water and also, like, a good contender on hybrid maps and also decent on land maps, even, like, Closed land maps, it plays pretty well. On Nomad, it plays pretty well. Uh, I'm just trying to think of a lot of different maps here. But I can't think of any map that Italians feel terrible on. They also have a really good late game. We saw them pop off in Hidden Cup on like Bay and whatnot as well here and there. I don't know. I think they're solid. I, I think I'm going to put them above Franks and maybe even above Byzantine. Uh, it's hard to say. I, I feel like Italians are always, you know, highly contested. Maybe even above Dravidians, but it's hard to say. Dravidians are probably a bit better on hybrid maps. Maybe same for Byzantine. Okay, right there feels better for, for Italians. Yeah, right there. It, it is basically the standard mid-tier Civ, so that feels fine right in the middle of the tier list. Next up, we got Japanese. Uh, this is one of the best Civs on hybrid maps, and this one gets highly contested all the time. Uh, it's also pretty good on, like, every map. Like, again, it's one of the Civs that just very versatile. The biggest weakness for the Japanese is its late game with no Bomber Cannons and no Cav. Suffers from the same problems as Dravidians. But I think it's just a little bit smoother than Dravidians. Getting a top of B tier slot makes the most sense for Japanese here. Um, also, I'm going to drop humans. I just realized they're basically really terrible in all hybrid and water maps. So what I said about them being top tier for uh, you know land maps is true, especially closed land maps. But I completely overlooked the fact that if there's any place to dock, humans become terrible. So for that reason, I'm going to actually drop them to right around here same reasoning applies i just realized that on a bunch of maps they're like pretty bad so we're going to drop them a hold here extremely unprofessional for me but this is why you have to watch the video and not just skip to the end and see the tier list you have to see the reasoning and the storyline for these civs uh, next up we got Khmer. i love Khmer. they're so good i think i'm going to put them right here above incas maybe even above burgundians yeah they are so good on anything land once again anything land they're so good uh, even hybrid maps are really good for one specific reason. Uh, you guys probably know this, but skipping the barracks is 175 wood. It's basically the difference between being able to attack while playing water and not being able to. Like a lot of civs, like for example, Dravidians, they also get the 200 wood in Feudal Age, right? So they could attack, they could go stable like Khmer, um, or they could go range, but, and, and that is solid. But Dravidians are way worse on like land maps and way worse in late game in a lot of different scenarios. So Khmer get the same bonus as one of a top tier hybrid map Civ in the early game. And they also scale really well as the game goes on. Castle Age is probably their best age um, or, or like late imp. I think Heavy Scorpions is a little bit slapped on as well for Khmer. The 9 range Heavy Scorpions are really good. They feel insane every time I go for them. A little clunky, but you know, still good. I don't know, I'm going to put Khmer right, right around here. The house hopping has insane potential, especially with the new hotkey. The Seek Shelter hotkey is broken for the Khmer houses, by the way. Uh, so I've been testing that out a little bit. It's, it's really, really solid. Uh, definitely worth mentioning that Khmer got a little, little indirect buff there. Next up, we got the Koreans. Uh, this civilization saw some decent play in Hidden Cup on maps like Cup. Um, basically, Koreans, all their bonuses mesh really well together. They have like the free tower upgrades, which is like really nice for pushing. They have the uh, mangonels that have no minimum range, and they also get free armor on the range units and cheaper wood units. So all that together meshes really well for like an archer, skirm, siege, tower push, and this is all about the map control. If you can control the map with the Koreans, you're going to have a really good time. Their biggest weaknesses are like late game, lacking bloodlines and armor, and having like pretty bad cav. Um, 
can hurt. And I think that's pretty much about it. Also lacking Blast Furnace can sometimes hurt if it's like Halb versus Halb. So like that's like the two things that I think Koreans kind of lack in Imp. They obviously lack the Monk Text and Castle. But the War Wagon is a strong unit. And overall, I really like the Koreans. I think they're pretty good. Uh, I would place them probably uh, somewhere in the B tier. Probably right behind Koreans. Similar to Berbers, they never feel like the best Civ. But they feel like a pretty good Civ in a lot of cases. So definitely worth considering. Next up, we got the Lithuanians. This is going to go into A tier. And I'm probably going to place them above the Khmer even. I used to be a really big Lithuanians hater, but recently I've been really liking the Lith. Their start on hybrid maps feels really good. Um, and being able to get to Castle Age and just drop down a few extra town centers feels incredibly smooth, by the way. Um, and getting that extra 100 food per town center. They also have a really like you know good like you know mid-late game. Uh, some awkward parts in late game, like lacking Blast Furnace, lacking armor on Halbs. Halb on Halb could be a bit tricky. But Lightus has been an insane unit for a long time now, unchecked. Light is super good, especially with relics. I don't know. I just feel like Lithuanians have a really clear win condition too. Just like get the castle, get some TCs down, play for the relics at the same time. And if you can manage that, then you're going to be gold and you're going to turbo straight to like a, an all-in castle. Uh, feels really good. Uh, great, good on hybrid maps as well. Uh, good on Nomad as well, for example. Uh, next up, we got the Magyars. Uh, this is going to be a classic case of top of C tier for the same reasoning as Ethiopians and Britons, where it actually has a really good, like, uh, you know, open land map scout play, but it's pretty predictable. Like, it's going to go scouts 90% of the time. Other options like Spear Scrim is passable. Militia Rush or Men Arms is, like, passable. Uh, actually, Men Arms is pretty bad with Magyars. It's, it's a really strong rush but you lack an eco bonus for the follow-up range, and it feels really bad to follow up with the uh, men-at-arms. Maybe men arm to scout is okay. Uh, but yeah, two militias is okay. Uh, Maggers are also not great on water maps because you have like zero like wood-saving bonus. Like uh, Water maps and hybrid maps, guys, you need wood-saving bonuses. That is what we look for. That's why like this is good on water maps. This is good on water maps. This is good on water maps because you uh, have a really strong navy. Uh, this saves 100 uh, food early, so it's kind of like a saving. This saves... Uh, wood early. It's like either wood or food savings, I guess, is a good way to say it. Magus gets basically none of it unless it makes scouts, which is a big investment. Uh, it's still C, C tier, though, because it's really good on like aggressive maps, and, and it does its job, I would say. Um, next up, we have Malay. I think Malay is actually in bottom of S tier, to be honest. Um, the civilization feels really crazy on so many different maps. It's extremely tricky to play against as well. Uh, there's really nothing wrong with Malay except for one caveat, one little issue. If you have to fight a lot with the Civ in like Feudal Age, they feel slightly weak. So if, if you have to fight too much in Feudal Age, it's pretty bad. What you love with Malay is a little bit of fighting into the next age, a little bit of fighting into the next age. So what I mean is you get to Feudal Age, you start putting maybe pressure to Militia with armor, maybe Spear Skur, maybe just Archers, maybe even Scouts, whatever you want to do. All right, fight a little bit, fully wall, get to Castle Age faster. And then you go crazy with archers, you know, get a little advantage in castle age, 3 TC boom into fast and forward castle, treb war. That is like the perfect, the dream scenario for Malay. Their Karambas with free armor is really solid. Their water play is extremely good. Uh, hybrid map play is really good as well because on hybrid map, getting up to the next age is super crucial. Uh, faster age up means earlier water uh, upgrade. And usually the water upgrade, the war galley upgrade wins you water. And that's huge for Malay. Uh, next up, we got the Malians. Uh, this is a classic case of top of B tier or bottom of A tier, in my opinion. I think I'm going to stick them in the top of B tier, though. Uh, debating if it's ahead of Japanese or below. I think it's going to be slightly below the Japanese. They're good on every map, but not the greatest on any map. And that is the typical thing with the Malians. So, if, again, it feels great to be in the B tier. Slightly higher than like Italians would be, just because they got slightly more options with like you know camel being available. Uh, slightly better options for all than rushing, just putting all your bills on gold. You know, Malian gold bonus goes crazy, and then you just dominate. Feels pretty good, man. Uh, next up, we got the Mayans. I think I'm gonna put Mayans in uh, S tier. Do I just put all three Mezzo in the same spot? That feels really nice, actually. Yeah, I like that. That is my Mezzo tier list right now, by the way. Incas used to be better than Mayans. They got nerfed. They took a step back. Aztecs are the hardest to play. Have the most potential, but, you know, also could be, like, the weakest. Mayans are, like, the best. And they're the best at all levels. Like, they're the best in pro level. And they're also the best in, like, beginner level. 
because they have easy options. Our blessed with thumb ring, eagles, 100 HP. Those are like free low. You just get the 100 HP eagles. It's pretty expensive, but once you get there, they're insane. And it just feels like mines in general are just like top tier. Um, they never feel weak. They can play hybrid maps and water maps, uh, and sorry, hybrid maps and open land maps pretty good. Uh, slightly weaker on closed maps, hideout and arena, and you know, just maps where there's a lot of stone walls or some chokes like Black Forest. Uh, but otherwise, I, I think that's like their only weakness. Even water maps, if you can land with some eagles, you can probably do pretty well. You have a really reasonable water economy too. A longer lasting fish goes crazy. Uh, I don't know. I like the mines. All three mezzo in the same spot feels pretty good for me. And like I mentioned at the start of the video with the Aztecs, if you just go for like the, the pro mine build order, which is like eagles and archers at the same time, you destroy so many civs. Uh, next up, Mongols. This is going to be S tier. I love the Mongols. The more I play with them, the more I feel like the Civ is cracked. If you guys watch my Twitch streams, you guys know how I feel about the Mongols. If I play against a 2000 ELO player, there's only one Civ in the game that they can beat me with if I don't disconnect. It's Mongols. If I play against anybody with Mongols, I think I can lose the game because they get such a good start. They can pressure me really fast. And if I take a little bit of damage in Feudal, they can go into all in step lances to finish me off. They have also a really reliable and good late game. They do well in all kinds of maps, hybrid maps. Uh, even closed maps, you can go like really fast castle, castle drop, like Mangadai Siege, all in. They have options, and I really like that for the Mongols. And they play well in all maps, even water maps, upping really fast. Couple galleys forward, you can beat even the top, the top tier civs like Vikings with that kind of style. Uh, maybe even landing versus Vikings on water could be a thing. Um, Mongols feel insane. Step lancers for Mongols are definitely overtuned right now. Uh, and it's actually a plague in the mid yellow ladder. Everyone's going like laming into Mongol step lancer all in. It's kind of crazy. Uh, it's a bit degenerate, but yeah, M Mongols is solid. Definitely S tier for me. And then my, for my last S tier, I'm going to actually stick in the Persians. I, I think that's the last S tier. I could be wrong. I don't see any S tiers left in the category down below. I think it's going to be my last S tier. The Persians, definitely the weakest of the S tier bunch, but still definitely up there. Persians feel really good right now. Uh, free 50 food, free 50 wood makes them really good on like every map like nomad they're solid uh water maps hybrid maps they're playable like hybrid maps they're great actually open land map they're really good uh closed map land maps they're playable they just feel really good on all kinds of maps man uh i just can't think of a single map where i'm like oh i don't want persons there at all um even in like black forest i could see a way where you can win with persians in a lot of cases i think if you just like cut the whole map at some point with elephants in late game and a massive boom could be a win condition, even against some of the best lives. Again, maybe I'm reaching there, but you know, Black Forest might be like their worst map, for example. And anyways, Black Forest isn't really played too, too much in 1v1 anyway, so not too much to consider there. Uh, but yeah, I like the Persians. The Vars goes crazy. Uh, next up, we got the Poles. How do I feel about the Poles? Uh, I'm not really 100% sure where I put them. I have to take a look at some of the other civs to understand where I'm feeling. I think I'm gonna stick them right here in subpar. Playable if you like them. They could be really good if you're good with them. Hard to play, very hard to play, because you have to defend the full works. You have to understand how important full work farming is. You have to understand how to make the full work farms properly. Definitely one of the hardest tips to play in the game, I think, actually, now that I think about it. If played correctly, it can easily rival the top eighth tier civs. Easily. Um but I, I don't like it, Georgians is like the better version of Poles. Better start the the freaking farms around the monastery, around the church is the same thing as Poles farms. Like there's no reason to play Poles if Georgians exist. Like basically how I feel about the Sif. So yeah, right now I'm not really loving the Poles because Georgians overshadows them in every way. And Poles I feel like are taking a big risks just to do the same thing as Georgians. Um, Poles did get a small buff lately, uh, recently making the full work cost only 100 wood instead of 125. Pretty good. Still doesn't change the overall feeling of the Civ, though. Next up, we got the Portuguese. This used to be an S tier Civ for me, but I'm not really sure I've put them right now. I think I have to put them top of A somewhere. Maybe right behind Hindustanis feels pretty good. Definitely a prowess on Arena and like maps like Socotra, even where you can get to like, uh, you know, all in organ guns. Organ guns are crazy good units. Uh, Fast and Fatoria is also another good possibility. As far as standard play, Archer into Crossbow is like perfect for Portuguese. Um, getting into Night Spam with Monks is also perfect. 
They're missing squires and uh, I think the last armor for infantry though. So their halbs are a little bit suspect. I think that's probably the worst thing about Portuguese having like slightly weaker halbs. Oh no, no, they're just missing squires. They have the last armor, I believe. But yeah, like missing squires sometimes hurts a little bit. No, they have all, all blacksmith upgrades, that's true. So just missing squires makes their halves a little awkward, but it's still fine. It's still fine. Uh, this sieve doesn't really have any big weaknesses. They're also pretty good on water and hybrid maps. Yeah, this sieve has no weaknesses, but it, it doesn't feel oppressive either. You know what I mean? It doesn't feel like it's the best sieve in the game at the same time. So I think right here makes a lot of sense. Maybe slightly better than Hindustani. Yeah, right here. Looking like a top 5 or top 10 sieve. Uh, next up, we got the Romans. Uh, I've been liking the civil a lot, man. I'm going to stick them. Where do I stick them? Probably right here. I might have to break up the Mezzo and stick them above Aztecs. I can't do that to the Mezzo. We're going to keep them together. <laughs> the Mezzo move as a unit. If one goes, all of them go. Um, now I, I like Romans here. I think that's a good spot for them. Uh, anything open land and hybrid, they're great. Closed maps, not so much. Water maps, not so much. Pretty good summary of what Romans are. Um... This sieve is easy to play, and it's really good at low levels too because the it's played differently at lower level and high level. In low level, you just want to go like meta arms and just go like meta arm armor and just destroy people with that, uh, and even like longsword scorpion. In high level, you want to play like scout skirm, like two militia maybe, a lot of fighting and feudal into like a faster castle into a lot of fighting in castle. That's how you want to play with Romans. Uh, they have a weak late game if you don't have a lot of economy. Uh, they have a great late game if you have a lot of economy, though. So that's why you want a lot of fighting in Feudal and Castle. Next up, we got the Saracens. I like the Saracens a lot, actually. But they don't feel like a top-tier sieve. If you like the Saracens, I'm going to put them right behind Franks. If you like them, hey, they're great. If you don't like them, avoid them. There's no issues whatsoever. Saracens feel really, really solid right around the B tier. Um, not, not great on any map, but not bad on any map either. Sicilians, ooh, this might be my only bad... Civ as well with Bulgarians. Sad to say, it, it just feels like a Civ that lacks an identity right now. We had the U putting rush that was like super hyped up, but dude, honestly, even that rush is like not even that good. Uh, I, I'd even maybe put Sicilians behind Bulgarians, but like their economy feels okay if it picks up. And their pure boom is better than Bulgarian pure boom. So they have those two things going for them uh, above Bulgarians. But overall, like pretty much like a zero threat Civ. You only lose to Sicilian if you made a mistake or like something went wrong. Uh, otherwise, Sicilians like they don't like what, what, what's even like the win condition with them. It, it's so hard to say. There are also clear holes in the tech tree for them. No hand cannoneer, no bombard cannon, for example. So like just dealing with Arbalus Halb is a nightmare. Yeah, your cavalier are pretty good with Holbrook, but not that great. They, they still died to Halbs in my opinion, and, and they still died to monks and camels. So I don't know. Uh, it, or maybe they don't die to camels, but maybe they die to monks and helps them, at least cost-efficiently-wise. Cost I'm just not seeing Sicilians being too much of a threat. Next up, we got the Slavs. Slavs are reasonable. Slavs are reasonable. Right ahead of the Saracens, I think, makes sense. Uh, or actually, slightly below the Saracens, because they, they perform better on less maps than Saracens. Saracens have water and hybrid in their arsenal. Slav is more like a pure land kind of sieve. But it performs really well on like a lot of the long-range, long-distance maps. Outcrop, Enclosed, uh, even Haboob. They perform really well where they can get the farms down. And then Siege Push and Castle, maybe a lot of Hussar raiding and Imp. The big Cavalry Infantry Siege gameplay. I like them right, right around there. The 15% farming is a huge boost for the Slavs. They used to be around D or, or C tier. Now they're up there at, at B tier. Uh, next up we got Spanish. Um... I'm going to put them right here above Berbers. They feel really good if you can get the Conks. And um, I think Conks right now, especially with Devotion, they don't really have a good counter in, in, uh, in Castle. It's just Skirms. Like, Monks don't counter Conks, Conks anymore, which I think is how it should be, to be honest. If you get to a Castle, a Monastery, Devotion plus Conks, I don't think you should get converted. Oh, sorry about that. I don't think you should get converted very fast by Monks. So, like, you still could get converted if you were playing like a, like a dummy, but before it was like you just got hard countered by like five monks with sanctity. You just can't engage that ever. Uh, now you can actually engage it like pretty comfortably. It's super deadly. Um, so I think Spanish got a really big buff with devotion there in Castleage. And I also think that the Civ has been great overall for a long time now. Uh, has a small weakness if you can't get the honks. Their Castleage is a bit generic. Their early game is nothing special. Uh, but hey, the 20 gold per tech is not bad either. Uh, not bad, not bad. They're pretty good Civ. 
the Tars is next up. They they're gonna feel right around like the Italian Frank section, where they're they're good if you like them around the Saracen. It's these four. It's like well, it, it, Italians are really good on water, but like Frank, Saracen, Tatars, they're good if you like them on like a variety of maps. If you don't like them, just don't worry about them, and it's fine. They have clear counters. They have some good matchups, some bad matchups. They feel like solid overall. Can't really go wrong with them, but nothing too special either. Uh, next up, we got the Teutons. I used to hate on this a lot, but it's not that bad. Um, I, I would definitely put it above the poles. And now that I think about it, I might even drop poles a bit more to like behind Burmese, to be honest. Uh, this Civ is really not like not worth playing too much right now. Uh, but maybe that's a bit harsh. It, it's still like, you know, pretty good with calf spam. Anyways, we're here to talk about the Teutons. Uh, Teutons have really good monk, knight, infantry play. Really smooth booming with the farms. I really love the Teutons farms these days. Uh, I used to sleep on that bonus a little bit. You should think it was not very good, but damn, is it good. Uh, you just have to put less on wood for it to feel good, by the way. That's the secret. Don't go like regular build. If you have, you guys have my builders, right? I have like nine or 10 on wood is like the magic number. With two ends, you drop that down to like eight, even seven sometimes. Okay. And that's how you feel like you have more resources to play with because you're not just floating wood. You instead have less wood, cheaper farms, therefore more, more farms, more food, which is what you want to get like knights or faster castle each time. Uh, solid sieve, but has some clear weaknesses where like it, it just doesn't have like bracer, doesn't have arbalest, it doesn't have husbandry. Has clear weaknesses. Don't have to go too you know too crazy about that for you guys to understand. Makes sense. Uh, next up, we got the Turks. Um, pretty good on arena. Pretty good on um just maps where you can let the like have do work, and it's really good if you're a smart player on like. A lot of different maps like even hybrid maps it's really good if you're really smart and you like to play strategic and off meta turks is your go-to sieve it's not a sieve where you can go scouts into knights and perform it, it absolutely not because it gets no bonuses for that kind of play a little bit faster gold gathering but that's about it you have to play like scouts into light cav and if he goes knights you go like a couple camels or monks and then 2tc boom instead of three and while he's 3tc booming you then do go 2tc into like a forward castle janissary play or like a faster imp hand can your bomber cannon play, you gotta do something different. You're not gonna play like a mirror match game. Like for example, Turks versus Franks. If it's just a mirror match, Turks go scout into camel, Franks go scout into knights, both go monks, then then Franks switches to you know halbs, and then they go like pallet and halb as their main combo, and Turks kind of are stuck on camel. You gotta go cannon, you know, uh, cannons. Uh, sorry, hand cannon with camel. It just feels like that kind of gameplay favors the Franks because Franks usually gets the forward castle. Uh, they can build up into their paladin before Turks are really ready to fight. The Habs are countering the camels. So in a standard game, the Frank EQ bonus shines way too much. But I think Turks definitely solid if you're, uh, you know, if you're a smart player. Uh, I, I think I put them in top of C right behind uh, Magyars. Next up, we got the Vietnamese. Uh, Vietnamese are a solid civilization. Where, you know, you have a good economy, good on a lot of different maps. Nothing really wrong with them. Not going to spend too much time here. I'd probably just stick them somewhere in top of B tier. Uh, right behind the Dravidians makes sense. Oh, sorry. Who was Britain's? I think here. Yeah, here. Um, yeah, I think that makes sense. Uh, they're not as good as water maps uh, on water maps. I think these three sieves take precedence, but they're still good on like a lot of land maps. Uh, definitely playable on all kinds of maps, though. And then lastly, we got the Vikings. I think Vikings are pretty solid. They're pretty good on Arabia. Uh, if you just you know play with you know their economy bonus, have a slightly weaker late game and missing options like the Dravidians, one of the best pure water sieves. Unfortunately, Vikings are not great on a lot of hybrid maps. Sometimes you can. Basically, the rule is if the water is big and you can go galleys, it's good. If the water is small, small ponds, galleys are not good. Fire galleys dominate, so Vikings takes a step back. For me, the Vikings are a perfect spot right around here. I'll probably put them be behind the Saracens, though. It just feels like they're better in less cases. But when they're good, they're great. Uh, that's going to be end the end of this tier list. I'm fairly happy with it. I really like uh, where I put a lot of these different sieves. Right now, the man of the moment is the Georgians. The getting that extra free 50 food at the start and getting the extra healing on Cav makes them OP. Abuse it while you can. Thanks so much for watching the video. Let me know in the comments below if you agreed or disagreed on any of my takes. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Like, comment, subscribe. Like the video. I'm not joking around, guys. Like it because I need the likes. And uh, yeah, see you guys later. Peace.